Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about fatigue. And fatigue is, is another form of dynamic loading failure uh, that is probably the most common form of failure that we would find in, in a lot of machine parts. So fatigue is basically failure of a part due to repeated cyclical style loading. So usually the failure will start at some sort of micro crack um, and that crack slowly over time propagates until it, it results in a catastrophic failure. And you know, you've, you've all experienced this most likely if you take a, a paper clip and you sit there and repeatedly bend it back and forth so that we're cyclically loading it, eventually it'll break doing that, right? So we've experienced fatigue and that is a fatigue failure when we do that. And that's kind of what makes fatigue interesting is that it's hard to predict. We don't always know exactly where the failure will occur. Um, oftentimes it'll occur at, at any place there's any sort of imperfect, imperfection. So um, like a defect in the material, an inclusion or something that was you know due to the, the, the casting of the metal or, or anything like that. Surface uh, flaws, you know, sometimes just surface roughness. You know, it's a sand cast part, so it's got a pretty rough surface that gives a lot of opportunities for um, kind of microscopic problems. Um, holes, anywhere there's a hole or a cut that's made, threads have been tapped in the material. Um, all of those kind of defects can lead to the initiation of a fatigue failure. So if we were to kind of visualize what a fatigue failure might look like, you know, say we have a round shaft, we can often, if we, you know, have one that's broken, we can often tell if there was fatigue uh, and a t fatigue failure because we'll see a pattern like a stri uh, striation, I don't know if I'm using that word right, kind of pattern where it'll propagate out from some initial starting point and it'll continue to do that. And basically this is just the growth of the crack over time. And this could take hours, it could take years, you know, whatever, depending on what the load is and, and how fast it's cycling, um, that could take a while. And basically what's happening is this crack is reducing the cross-sectional area of the part and therefore reducing its strength by increasing the stress, right? If the area gets smaller, then the stress gets larger for the same applied load. And then eventually it fractures. And so we can see this a lot of times when we look at parts, we can see this kind of slow growth. It might be uh, smooth because it's, you know, been moving while these two parts were actually had a crack between them. There's been moving and, and kind of small, you know, rubbing between the two, which would smooth out that surface until eventually that crack was large enough that it caused a catastrophic fracture. And this is a problem, right? Because usually if it's when it fatigues, uh, to failure, it fails at a point below its yield stress. So while static loading analysis may predict that this part would be perfectly fine, under a fatigue analysis, it actually fails, right? So like I said, it's, it's pretty difficult to, to actually predict when this is going to happen, you know, just analytically. We can't just apply standard mechanical engineering theory to a part uh, because we don't know where the where the the imperfections are so instead what's been done is they do uh, standard testing standardized testing in order to generate a bunch of data that they can apply statistics to and give us a an opportunity for a best guess at when a part is going to fail so this is just a on the screen this is a an image from the textbook on what a fatigue test might look like and you can see there's a motor for rotating that shaft. And then we have a test specimen. And in the middle of our uh, diagram, there's this machined area, which gives a you know, very precisely known um, failure location. So it's, it's smaller diameter, right? Which is often what we do with um, our test specimens, you know, to make sure that they fail where we think they'll fail or where we want them to fail. And then it's got these loads that are applied or a load that's applied to, to provide a stress at that location. So it's going to introduce um, uh, a bending stress at that location. So then as you can imagine with bending stress, uh, just as an example, there's tensile stress on one side, compressive stress on the other side, and the neutral axis is of course in the middle. Uh, 
So as this sample rotates, any one particular spot on the surface of that shaft as it goes around passes through tensile loading, compressive loading, and, and zero uh, loading as it travels around. So we can spin this at, you know, however many RPM we want to and subject it to that many cycles of loading. So we do that, run it for, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of cycles with different varying amounts of load through the application of weight until it fails. And then, you know, that gets a little data, uh, data point check mark on, on our, you know, uh, spreadsheet, I guess. And then we do it again, and then we do it again, and then we do it again. And you generate this data uh, until you have enough that you can, you know, with some level of statistical uh, accuracy, can predict when a, a no, an unknown part is going to fail. So, great, that's the general process. And then what we end up getting from that, and I'm just going to put this here, but I'm going to talk about it in, in later videos as well. What we end up getting from that is what we call an endurance limit. And the endurance limit, actually, um, the first endurance limit I'll, I'll call SN prime, but doesn't really matter. They're both kind of the same thing. Uh, this endurance limit tells us, you know, what we can expect under these, these particular um, ideal conditions, right? So SN prime is kind of under test conditions. That's what we predict statistically. And then we can correct that because, again, we're, we're using statistics and most of the time we're not designing and installing parts in perfectly ideal test style conditions. So we introduce all these correction factors. So we have C sub L, which is a load factor. This corrects for the type of load. Um, some typing, types of load are more susceptible to imperfections in the material, just based on how the stress is distributed. We have a gradient factor, which is um, kind of dependent primarily on the size of the part. So again, you know, a larger part has greater chance of having uh, material imperfections and, and things. We have a surface factor. I mentioned that many times fatigue, like a micro crack um, in fatigue might start at a surface imperfection. So depending on how our part was made, uh, we might have a higher susceptibility to surface imperfections. We have a temperature correction, um, primarily because higher temperature materials uh, cause a decrease in the strength or higher temperatures cause a decrease in the material strength. Um, so this can correct for that over you know, certain temperatures. And then we have a, a reliability factor. So really what this is taking into account is that the, the, the specification for SN prime, which is the endurance limit from our experiment, is based on a, a certain set reliability. So we kind of limit what we, you know, what we say by saying, oh, you know, 90% of parts will survive by default, right? Or not by default, but by statistical prediction based on our experiment and the number that we put out there. However, maybe you're doing an application where you need greater reliability. You know, a lot of lives are at stake, um, that sort of thing, very expensive. So you can increase that reliability by reducing your endurance limit, your corrected endurance limit, which is this SN. So that gets factored into this, to this C sub R. And I'll talk about kind of a little bit more about all of these, but each one of these factors is trying to account for different things and build in um, a statistical analysis or statistical understanding of whether or not we would predict part failure. All right. Thanks, everyone.